and the Blue Jays are back in town tonight for the home opener against the Seattle Mariners at the newly renovated Rogers Center. We're giving you a look over top of the mm -hmm. Rogers Center with Chopper 24. Let's bring in Jian Lee, who I believe is inside. Oh, she is. Good ah. morning, Ji. You have a great assignment today. <laughs> Good morning, Courtney. Good morning, Jen. Yes, we are here. The boys of summer are back, and this will be their home opener for the season. And as you know, last year we showed you the brand new renovations in the outfield and on the upper level. Now we get to show you the brand new renovations, brand new seats here in the lower level. All right, so the seats are a little bit wider. There's more leg room. The seats point towards home plate. And guess what? What's making everybody happy? There are now cup holders. I don't know why. For some reason, I thought there were cup holders before, but apparently not. So I'm going to take a seat, feel the uh, moment and enjoy this moment. Look at that. And everyone coming to today's home opener will get this beautiful rally towel. Now, the boys have been on the road for 10 games to give a little bit of extra time to complete these renovations. Currently, uh, they're four and six on the road, but maybe that's what they need. They need to come back home and get this season going and get fired up. Uh, we know that tonight, Jose Barrios will take the mound. First pitch just after seven o'clock. Um, uh, and again, you can feel the excitement, a lot of fans waiting for this moment, waiting to sit in these brand new seats. And also there's going to be a ton of new foods and drinks being offered on the menu. So a brand new season. We'll see how it goes. Now, stay tuned because in my next half hour, I'm going to be speaking to President and CEO Mark Shapiro and we'll get all the the inside information that you need for a fantastic season. In the meantime, we'll send it back to you, Courtney. That's great. Lots to look forward to there. And G, I quickly want to ask, how are the seats? Are they comfortable? Super comfortable, and I'm great. told there's extra leg room. Look at this. Yeah, no, it looks, it looks very great. comfortable. I was just thinking you're one of the first then to sit in these <laughs> seats, right? 100%. <laughs> That's great. All right, Jian Lee reporting live inside Rogers Center. We'll continue to check in with you. Thanks, G. Yes, after a 10 game road trip, the boys are back, and tonight will be their home opener against the Mariners. Uh, to get an inside scoop on how the team is feeling, we're joined now by President and CEO of the Blue Jays, Mark Shapiro. Mm. All right, so my first time sitting in the <laughs> seats, this lower bowl renovation is spectacular. It's spectacular. It was really like a feat, you know, incredible mm. to consider. You don't think about it when you're looking at it now, but there was nothing here just about four months ago. Nothing. When we completely rebuilt it, thousands of Canadian workers have been in here mm -hmm. 20 hours a day, seven days a week, over holidays, overnights. Um, there's still a sea of activity underneath the stands behind home plate, but it is going to be a, a reimagined lower bowl that kind of connects the work that you and I talked about in the outfield last year and, and makes it more of a baseball specific, kind of takes it from that multi purpose round you know, concrete filled facility to a more baseball specific facility. Yeah, you know, and I didn't realize that the seats were pointing in the past towards the field, but this time the it's wrong all direction. Their, yeah. Wrong direction. <laughs> yeah. Now to home plate. Too narrow. There weren't cup holders, small things like that. Yeah. Um, just things that you would do if you were building a new facility. And that's the, really the way to think about it is <clears throat> below the concourse, it is completely new, everything. So it's uh, it's it's going to be a new experience for anyone that loves the game of baseball and loves attending games at Rogers Center and pulling for the Jays. All right, so because of the renovations, the boys had to be on the road for 10 tough, games, yeah. and that's tough. They're four and six right now. Let's talk about how they've been doing so far. It's been very up and down, so let's start with pitching. A lot of fans concerned whether or not uh, the pitchers can close it out, finish off a game, and be consistent. Yeah, well, we've got two of our best relievers in yeah. Eric Swanson and Jordan Romano, both hurt, but they're coming quickly. They both threw in the past couple days in games down in Dunedin. Both guys should be back in a short period of time. That will significantly change the dynamic of the bullpen. And then we've got Alec Manoa still coming back, and he's throwing the ball well. And then Yariel Rodriguez, who was a Cuban player that we signed in the offseason, both you know preparing to, to contribute as well. So 
four major reinforcements potentially if we need to, but the pitching overall, we've had a couple rough spots, has been pretty good, but we're going to be as good as our star players, as good as Vladdy and Bo and, you know, the great players on this team are. They're going to need to carry us. Okay, so let's talk about Vladdy and Bo and Springer all coming back. Uh, offense, they need to fire it up. And again, consistency seems to be the word. What do you think it's going to take for these guys to get into a groove? I mean, I think just are great players being as great as they can be. They're in the moving from being young players into the prime of their career. They understand what it means to take ownership uh, and to take accountability, not just for their play, but for the team. Uh, they're some of the best players in the entire game. So if they play the way they're capable of playing, we're going to be fine. Now, I don't want to harp on how last season ended, but <laughs> we do need to touch upon, you know, in that postseason press conference, you said there would be more transparency um, with with the organization and the players. So what does that entail behind the scenes? Well, we restructured the way we uh, disseminate information, the way we communicate and game plan. We put Don Mattingly, moved him in his roles overseeing the offense. Um, and just we're more thoughtful about the way we game plan, the way we choreograph and kind of script games and think about using information. I think what's happened is as technology and analysis has increased so much over the past 10 years, the way we use it has increased, and we, don't, we won't always talk about that with players, and that's what I was referring to. Okay, because I know a lot of people were quite upset as how the season ended last year, that controversial call about pulling Jose Barrios out early. So the question is, what lessons have been learned from that and entering into this brand new season? Just communicating more about the way we're going to run a game and the way what we think puts us in the best position to be successful and making sure our players understand the reasons before instead of after. All right, let's talk about defense. Uh, you've got Kevin coming back. We have Springer in the field, uh, but we are missing Matt Chapman. So I wanted to know your thoughts about bringing in Isaiah at third base. Yeah, IKF is, yeah. you know, no one is Matt Chapman defensively in the entire game, but IKF defensively is. I think what we're, we're going to miss between Chappie and, mm -hmm. and IKF is going to be power and home runs, but defensively he's going to be seamless. We're going to have one of the best defensive teams in Major League Baseball. There's not much question about that. I love it. I love that you call him IKF. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Easier than saying. That's true. Kind of <laughs> um, and we'll wrap things up, but, you know, we've got to talk about the biggest thing that's going to happen here at Rogers Center this year, and that's Taylor Swift coming oh, in, right? That's not <laughs> after we celebrate the world championship. After we celebrate. First yeah. Taylor, oh, after we celebrate the world championship and then Taylor coming yes. in. That's going to be yeah. a big deal here for the renovated that uh, center. That is a major deal. Yeah, <laughs> six shows in November and... Uh, it, it's a phenomena that I, I and unlike anything, I've, I've seen her quite a few times yeah. with my daughter, uh, but this tour is is beyond anything that I've ever experienced in entertainment and sports, and uh, it fuses the the two between ha with the ability to have it here. So excited to bring that to to our fans throughout Canada. For sure, but first we'll win the series World first Series. First, we have that business to take care of. Okay, yeah. good luck with the season. Thanks, Thank you, Jane. Mark. You're always great to see. You. Thank you. There is something special about being here on the field, right by home plate. Joining me now. Now is Tom Farrell. He is the director of field operations. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So we know the, the lower section here, it's all brand new. Is the field brand new? Yeah, the actual field is brand new. So when we started last year's mm -hmm. phase one renovation, we were able to salvage most of the field. We cut the turf back, rolled it up, and we were able to replace, return it for the season. With this renovation, so because it was so extensive, we literally had to tear the whole field out and replace it with a brand new one. The players came in last night. They had a chance to finally see all the renovations. What was it like? Uh, everybody we've seen that stepped on the field and seen the renovations has loved it. Like it just, they're blown away by how much was done in such a short period of time. So you obviously are excited for a brand new season. You've been here since 1987? Yeah, I actually started at Exhibition Stadium yes. as a kid <laughs> in 1987 as a ticket taker and then wow. moved over to grounds crew and just might work my way up to director. So you've been here, you were here when they won back-to-back -back World yes. Series. Yes, that I must was have actually on the field when they won that. What was the that moment like? It was uh, surreal. Um, we were, I was actually stationed behind third base. I've told the story before, my goal was to get third base and pull it and secure it for risk that fans might mm. come out and grab it. Um, so I got a little excited when Joe hit his home run, ran up to third base, hit the brakes just at third base dirt area. As I see Joe running towards me, I almost pulled the base out before he got there. <laughs> um, so if you see the clips of that time period and Joe's running around third, you'll see me in the background uh, stunned and 
thankfully still employed because I didn't pull the base <laughs> out. <laughs> I'm going to look at the footage a little bit closer now. We'll see a young uh, you right there. Uh, tell me a little bit more. Like I said, is this painted on, this logo? No, actually, the logo behind home plate yeah. is actually woven in. Oh, so wow. each of those fibers, the different colors, blue, white, and red, are actually colored fibers that are stitched in when the turf is being fabricated and there's some areas like if we put uh, special logos for special events we can paint them on the field yes. and remove them but this one's actually permanent wow okay so as we mentioned the field is fresh Here, i get it. to do something really special i'm going to run the bases what's the distance like between oh, each you got base? 90 feet between each base so okay here we go breath. are you ready okay cheer me on tom All right, ready let's go let's go There you go. <laughs> Thank you. You're very welcome. Congrats on the new season. I'm out of breath. Again, the Jays against the Mariners tonight. First pitch after seven. Special event being held today at York Aid Mall in the Jane and Finch community that's going to give many students the opportunity to really glam up for their school proms. Gian Lee is there this morning giving us a sneak peek at the event. Gee, I love events like this. Oh, this is an incredible event, Nick. And yeah, it takes place tomorrow here at York Gate Mall. But you can see it's really busy right now because they're setting everything up. So you have officers from 31 Division uh, prepping some of these uh, gift bags. You've got Ruby's Beauty Hair Salon on standby, ready to do hair for some of the students that are coming through. And then look at all these incredible outfits that have been donated. Uh, so students that have registered can come in tomorrow, pick out the outfit that they want, get a little glammed up, get some makeup done, and get all ready for prom. Joining me now from the Children's Breakfast Club is Rick. And uh, good morning, Rick. How are morning. you? Good to see you. Good. So tell me a little bit more of this event. Well, this is our second year doing this now. Uh, last year, we started a little bit late. And so we only had 200 children that uh, registered for the program. But this year, we're well over 500. And the registration's just gone off the wall. So the demand is there. And you know, last year, I, at first we looked at all the work that went into it, but you know, you saw the young men and women come out of those change rooms and spin around and the confidence that it built in them, having an outfit that made them feel good about themselves and proud, and to be able to participate in their graduations fully. And that's what's made this all work. And that's why we've got the hundreds of volunteers that are making this happen today. You know, from makeup to hair, you know, the outfits themselves, and just the, the, the fact that the police are so supportive of this, it makes it all happen. Yeah, and you know, for every student graduating a prom, it's a big deal. It is And you want to look your best and feel your best. And it makes you feel confident when you got an outfit that you're proud of, and it makes you feel good. And as I said, you know, we watched the young women come out and spin around, and they, they, it was just like Cinderella. <laughs> Honestly, it truly was. And yeah. even the young men. The only challenge we had with the young men was that the suits are... They're big in the shoulders, but so small in the waist, so we had to mix and match for them. <laughs> I know. I have to go through that with my son. Same yeah. thing. Uh, so people can still come and donate today. Still donate today. Tomorrow it starts at 12 noon, yeah. and the students will be coming right through till 7 o'clock in the evening. And if there's students that still haven't registered and want to come by, we'll try to address them as many as we can. Yeah. We want to make sure the first 500 that are registered, or their needs are addressed first. But anybody that else that needs a dress or an outfit, please come by. Yeah, they'll try to accommodate as many people many as people possible. As we can. If you haven't registered, you can certainly send an email to info at breakfastclubs with an S dot C A, and hopefully they can squeeze you in. Thank you so yeah, much. We'll do the best. Thank okay, you. Thank okay, thank you. Thanks, uh, we've got a student here who's getting her makeup done. Uh, this is with Vela Beauty. Uh, permanent makeup, right? Hi, good morning. Hi, what's your name? Zara. Zara, okay, so Zara, you're getting uh, your face done. Just to give you an idea of what to do for prom. Are you excited? Like, what grade are you in? And I'm in grade 11. Yes. I go to James Cardinal McGuigan Catholic yeah. High School. I'm honestly really excited that I'm allowed to be a part of this. And prom's a big deal, right, for every student. You want to look your best and feel your best? Exactly. 
-hmm. Amazing. And you're with Vela? Yes. Yeah, so you're you're going to be providing some makeup tips and everything for the yes. day? Yes, for the big day, yes. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you so much. And then you've got all the volunteers here as well. Let me speak to one of the volunteers. Hi. How are you? What's your name? My name is Cecily Horn. Cecily. Oh, my gosh. Can I see this gown? So somebody donated this? Yes. <gasps> Everything wow. here is all donated. That will be so beautiful on yes, somebody. I yes. love the color and I love the rhinestones. That's right. Thank you. And why is it so important for you to help out like this? I'm just going to bring this down a bit as a volunteer. Volunteering is rewarding. Mm. And I usually say if you, can, if you don't have money to donate, donate your time which is so valuable yes. too. Thank you yes. so much. So what an incredible event. Again, um, we've got so many people coming in. It's going to be a busy day, but you can still donate if you've got accessories, dresses, suits. The boys need suits. Come by your gate mall, drop it off. And of course, the main event happens tomorrow at noon. Good morning. We are live here at York Gate Mall where volunteers, police, uh, students, and parents are all helping out to get ready for the Children's Breakfast Club's big prom event. It takes place tomorrow at 12, but you're getting a sneak peek of what's happening right now. So people are donating beautiful outfits so that students can come in and pick out an outfit for prom. I picked this dress out. Isn't that gorgeous? And I think it would look great with these shoes right there. Joining me now is Deputy Chief Rob Johnson and Superintendent. Andy Singh with 31 Division. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Uh, so the police are very much involved in this event. It's all about partnership. Tell me a little bit more of why this was important for Toronto Police. Well, any time that we can connect with community and, and uh, to, uh, you know, doing it with a, a partner like the Barfoot Club is uh, is always encouraging. They do so much in the community to help, you know, folks, uh, uh, young people in the community transition in different stages of their life. So it's very important for us to be able to, to provide that opportunity and be included in this. Yeah, it really is about community coming together. Super Superintendent Andy saying, I want to ask, you've got a lot of your officers here from 31 Division. They volunteer a lot and help out in the community, don't they? Absolutely. And, and one of the main things is, is it's even the officers coming together and contributing, donating, but also this is part of the fabric of how we connect with the community yeah. to make somebody's day special. And how, we know how important prom is. I for sure remember I, I do. And the youth, this is a great opportunity for them to come together and also understand that Listen, at the end of the day, we're trying to make your day special, but it also makes our day. Being here, connecting with them, and the great energy we have here today. Love it. Thank you so much for joining us this much. morning. And you can see all the officers um, helping out there, putting together goodie bags, getting everything sorted. There's a lot of stuff that has come through here. And again, there are 500 students already registered for this. Registration has closed, but if you still want a spot, they're going to try to accommodate as many people as possible. Email info at breakfastclubs with an S dot C. All right. I've got two gentlemen here. You look so handsome. Hi, what's your name? Um, I'm Rocco. Hi, and what's your name? Alonzo. Alonzo, all right. Did you pick out this outfit just now right here? Yep. Okay, so tell me a little bit about the look here. What are you going for? So just trying to get ready for graduation. Just a nice little, like, black on black. It looks good. I like it. It very, fits well. Very slick. I like the clean look. It looks great on you. And about you, tell me a little bit more of the outfit you picked here. Well, Normally I would like go for the whole black outfit, but I want to mix up, go for a little white here, go for a little brown for the shoes, whatnot, and just mix it up a little. I love it. Some of this stuff is brand new. I can see right here, this shirt is brand new. Yeah, it is brand new okay. and it feels good. Are you excited about graduating? Yeah, but not at the same time, because I'm going to miss middle school. Yeah, I hear you. How about you? Are you excited? Yeah, the same. It's it's exciting, but also nervous at the same time. New adventures, new people to meet. It's going to be fun. It's going to be great. Oh, I love it. So again, uh, the main event starts tomorrow here at York Gate Mall, 12 p.m. Um, registration is closed, but if you want to try to squeeze in, just info at breakfastclubs with an S dot C. Guys, let's get up on the ramp here. Let's do our little uh, photo op right here, because all the moms here and parents Parents. They're taking photos. Good morning. We are live here at York Gate Mall. Look at who I'm with. I'm with Mrs. Universe Jamaica 2023. Hey. 
Andrea, and then of course the director of Mrs. Universe Jamaica, uh, Shannon joins me now. Uh, you are here as ambassadors for this event for the Children's Breakfast Club Prom event. Tell me a little bit more of your enrollment, uh, your involvement here. My involvement, first of all, I have to say hello to everybody. It's so amazing to be here. Our involvement is really to simply be ambassadors and to, uh, we brought a few things over for the um, students that are here. And then we're also here to show support and to speak with them as well. Yeah, and this is really important, Shannon, right? Yes, to be is. involved in this, why? It is. This is, well, this is my second year being involved with this. And it really resonates with me because I was a teenage mom to start off. And I went straight from high school, straight to college. And education is very important to me. So I come out to support these events to help inspire the young women, young men to continue their education. Yeah, and prom's such a big deal, it's right? Big so deal. what is it like seeing some of our model students right now? It's so heartwarming to yeah. see because a lot of them would never have had this opportunity if it was not for the Children's Breakfast Club. So we are so, I'm so grateful just to be a part of it and just to um, support. You really get a sense of community coming together Absolutely. here, right? Absolutely. Yeah, and then so this is something that Miss Universe Jamaica is all about is giving back, obviously, to the community. Yes. yes. Yeah. We're involved in schools here in Canada and Jamaica. So, and Andrea is an educator, so we're very well-rounded when it comes onto our platform with Mrs. Universe Jamaica and in the community. Okay, and good luck. So, Thank you so much. Is, when does your reign end? July, July 13th will be crowning a new successor, yes. Okay, in the meantime, <laughs> it's been wonderful for yes, you, thank right? thank you so much. Thank you for thank joining so. us. Thank Let's you. talk to some of the students here. They look amazing. So these are students thank that have you. come in just to model some of these outfits. Hi, what's your name? Hi, I'm Chanel. Chanel. Mariah. Omari and Zara. Okay, and then we've met our male models before. They're not graduating this year. They've come out just to show these incredible outfits. I want to know, obviously, somebody's going to pick out a dress like this tomorrow. How special is that for students to look their best at prom? I believe this is, like, a great opportunity for young girls, young men to pick out their dresses and suits. Yeah. And, like... Have feel a, amazing. Yeah, feel good. I love this outfit. Great. Did it did it hit you right away? You're like, I've got to have this. Yes, I definitely <laughs> like the little thing going on over here. I definitely think this is good for students um, our age yeah. to have an idea of how they want the look yes. during the prom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I notice hair and makeup. They have people here volunteering. That's really important to you, especially for a girl, right? Yeah, especially yeah. like everybody like deserves to feel nice on their prom day, graduation, and everything. But yeah, I think. These dresses are affordable and they're nice too, so why not? Why not? You look amazing. As soon as you saw it, you just thought this is gonna look amazing on somebody. Yeah, like it called my name when I thought, when I seen it, kind of called my name. So I'm like, I'm definitely going to wear this. Uh -huh. so. Beautiful. Thank you so much. And of course, the guys look great as well. So this event here at York Gate Mall it actually takes place tomorrow, starting at 12. Uh, this is a sneak peek. Um, Students have already registered 500 already, but if uh, they're going to try to squeeze in as many people as possible, all you have to do is go to info at breakfastclubs with an S dot CA. And for any businesses out there, they need donations, especially suits for boys, as many accessories and stuff for boys, really important. But any sort of donation, shoes, um, dresses, suits, all of that, you can drop it off today at York Gate Mall. Good morning. We are live here at York Gate Mall for a very special event that's taking place tomorrow at 12. It's for the Children's Breakfast Clubs. It's their prom event, and it really is about bringing the community together. Joining me now is Inspector Rinkoff and Zubeda with Children's Breakfast Club. I'll start with you, Inspector Rinkoff. Tell me a little bit more of your unit's involvement with us. That's great. So, sure, I work at the Community Partnership and Engagement Unit. Really, I think that's one of the best units of the Toronto Police Service because we get to to work across the city with all our communities, including our youth. So an event like today, the importance of prom, it's an opportunity to give back, to help out some of these youth that may have some challenges in their lives and really make their night special. And so we're all here, members of the Community Partnership and Engagement Unit are here to really help a hand. And I have an important message, I really do. And that is we're a little bit short on young men's suits. So if you have young men's suits at home that could be reused for this special event, bring them down to the York Gate Mall 
We're open till noon today and we're open again at 12.30 tomorrow. Use the entrance near the Tim Hortons and we can really use those suits. So thank you so much and thank you for the opportunity. Well, thank you for having us. We had all the police officers here earlier uh, getting the good uh, goodie bags ready for tomorrow. So I appreciate the partnership there. And again, suits, all you retailers out there and companies and anybody at home, bring some stuff for the boys. So Beta, this yeah. is really important, right? It 500 is. children have signed up so far. 500 kids have signed up. So that tells you the need of it. Yeah. And I think we are just it's just the tip of the iceberg because there's so many children and students who cannot go to graduation because they don't have an outfit. Yeah. Now, Jen, you know, we are women, girls. You want to be dressed up. You yeah. want to look nice. You want to be all there. And it's also building that confidence, right? So when you're dressed well, you're looking good, it, it helps you with the confidence. But I want to take it a step further. It's not just saying you look great and you're graduating, but we want to encourage them to say, where are you going next? Mm. University, colleges, we've got Centennial College here, we've got Humber, Seneca, to tell our students, move forward, yeah. you know? Beauty is great, but that's not the only thing. No, it isn't. Right? Yeah. So we want to push the education aspect of it, but we want them to have that confidence and ability to go for their prom. Okay. Thank right? you so much Thank for you. all you do, Thank Sabina. You. Thank you. So let's give a shout out to some of the businesses here. We've got Ruby's Hair Salon that's going to be doing hair for the students. We've got Vela Beauty Makeup that's going to be doing the makeup. And then, of course, as mentioned, it's not just about looking great, but where do you go next? So we've got representatives from Centennial College and Humber College. And of course, it's all about about the students and they've got their amazing outfits on. We'll start the fashion show. And in the meantime, I'm gonna bring Lennox over here. Lennox, you're one of the volunteers here. Yes, ma'am. Tell me the importance of volunteering for such a special event. Well, it gives the kids and them some sort of dignity and the community too, that there's people looking out for these young people and knowing that they are the future leaving high school and moving on. So it shows them that there's still people that cares about them and the next road that they travel. So I think it's a great idea to have all the organization, all the people, you know, Sleepers, everyone involved in this and they see what the community and, you know, Southern Ontario itself is pushing out yeah. to engage. You know, everybody comes together for such a beautiful thing and it really is about our, our youth. They're the next generation and we need to support them in every way possible. Yes, definitely. And and we won't just stop here by supporting them. As you know, yeah. part of volunteering and supporting it is beyond. And, you know, we're going to show them too. It's basically like yeah. each one teach one. So we're here and we know there's another of us coming to do somewhat the same okay. thing too. Thank you so much. And I want to thank all of our model students here. Come on up for a group shot, everybody. Find a spot. DJ, we're going to pop up the music. And again, um, 500 students already registered. If you didn't, they're going to try to squeeze you in. Just send an email to info at breakfastclubs with an S dot CA. Thank you, everyone. You look fabulous. We'll send it back to you in studio. Okay, gee, they look fabulous. What a great initiative. Uh, hope all the kids have fun at their upcoming proms.